Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the music software iReal Pro. This is the first in a series of videos covering the desktop version of the app, but there is a mobile version available as well. As we'll see, this app is very useful for practicing and learning new music. While it is designed a little bit more for jazz players, as we'll see, folks interested in all kinds of music can still make good use of it. So let's get started. While iReal Pro has a few different uses, the primary one is displaying easy to read chord charts and automatically generating MIDI backing tracks based off of those chord charts. And since these backing tracks are auto-generated MIDI, that means we can change all sorts of parameters like tempo and key. So when we install and open the iReal app for the first time, it will be empty. It doesn't come with any songs preloaded. So the first thing we have to do is go to the online iReal Pro forums and download playlists of songs. We can do that right from the app itself by clicking on this little globe icon here at the top. That will open up this web page here containing threads with different genres of music. Thankfully, they give us a link to download some of the main playlists right here. That brings us to this page here, which shows us the main playlists with the most songs on them. I'm just going to start with the Jazz 1410 at the top. That means it's a playlist with 1,410 jazz songs in it. When I click on this link here, it should automatically download a file that iReal Pro can open to load up all the songs into the app. If it doesn't open automatically, you should be able to download the HTML file and then open that in iReal Pro. Back in iReal Pro, it shows us a little preview of all the songs it's about to import. We could go through the songs one by one and import them individually, but for now, I'm going to import the whole playlist. Once I do that, I can see my Jazz 1410 playlist has been added to my playlist section, and I have all the songs right here. Now that we have some songs loaded into the app, we can go through the overall layout. So on the left side, we have our library menu, and at the top, we can show or hide it with this little button here. Next to that is the button we use to get to our online form. Moving down, we have our search bar where we can search for a specific song. Then we have the song list. This will include all the songs from all the playlists. Right now, I just have one playlist, but if I had multiple, this would contain all the songs from all of them. Below that, I have the last viewed list. This will show whatever songs I was looking at recently. Then I have last imported, showing whatever you recently imported. After that, we have the last edited, which will show whichever songs you edited recently. And yes, you can edit chord charts in this app, which we'll look at in a future video. These last viewed, imported, and edited lists can be cleared by right-clicking and hit clear all. And next we have the trash bin, which much like your desktop is where songs go when you first delete them. But then to actually get rid of them, you have to right click and hit empty trash. And if we go back to our song list, we'll see that this next column here gets populated with our full list of songs. As you can see, the title and composer of each song is listed, along with some information for the MIDI backing track, including the style, tempo, and key. And I can change the look of this list by hitting this button up here to change it to a column view. Like most column views, I can click the headers to sort alphabetically by that column, either by title, composer, or style. But for now, let's go back to the default. And if I click on one of the songs, the chord chart will appear. Notice the very simple format with no staff or melody, just the chords and essential information. And on the right side, we have the controls for the backing track. At the top, we have our play and stop buttons, which can also be triggered by the spacebar, and where the full runtime of the backing track will display once we've started it. Below that is the number of repeats, or how many times it will play through the whole chord chart, the tempo, and the key all of which can be changed. The number of repeats and tempo can be adjusted either by the little arrows here on the side or by clicking and dragging the number itself. To change the key, just click on the existing one and a drop-down menu will appear. Notice that the default is indicated and as soon as I make my selection, all the chords will change. Below that is the style of the backing track, which we can also change by clicking here. And as you can see, there's quite a few to choose from, and we can purchase even more. Below that is the master volume, and then adjustments for each individual instrument in the backing track. This is part of what makes iReal Pro so useful. Let's say I wanted to practice piano along with the song. Well, I can just take this fader, drag it 
all the way to the left, muting the piano entirely, and now I have a backing track of just bass and drums I can play along with. I also have some options for which instruments are playing the backing track. For example, I can change this piano to a Rhodes or a vibraphone. Continuing on down, I can adjust how much reverb is on the backing track. And if I have changed the instruments, I can reset the defaults for this particular song. This little checkbox here for embellished chords simply tells the chordal instrument in the backing track to play a few extra extensions and alterations that might not be notated in the chord chart. The practice tempo, transposition, and chord diagrams are more advanced practice features we'll cover in a later video. But for now, we can look at the count and duration, where we can choose how many measures we want the count in to be. We can also adjust the volume of the count in, along with what sounds are used for each beat. Click 1 is the sound used for beat 1 of each bar of the count in, and click 2 being the rest of the beats. Going back to the very top of this right side menu, we can choose how these chords are displayed. We have the default font, the handwritten font, a number notation showing the scale degrees of each chord, we have guitar chord diagrams, one hand piano chord diagrams, two-hand piano chord diagrams, and ukulele chord diagrams. But let's go back to the default for now. To the right of that is the button to edit or create a new song, which we'll have a look at in another video. Export and share the song, which we'll also save for another video. And then a button to hide and show this right side menu. So let's give it a quick try. If I press the play button or the space bar, it will give me a count in and then automatically generate a MIDI backing track according to this chord chart based off of all of the parameters I have set on the right side panel. I press the play button or space bar to pause, and I can even change some of these parameters while the track is playing. Although if I want to change the number of repeats or the key, that's going to pause the backing track. Also worth noticing is how each bar is highlighted as you go through the song, and that you can start the backing track from any bar in the song simply by clicking on it, and either pressing play or the space bar. It will give you a new count in, and then start from there. We can also get it to play a certain selection of measures simply by clicking and dragging over the section that we want. And then when we hit play or the space bar, it will repeat this section indefinitely. So we should stop there so you can give some of this a try for yourself. Download and install the app load up a playlist and start playing around with some of the backing tracks. Happy practicing.